last year, uh, shortly before I released the Gilly Gobbler video, I was talking about um, making another ghillie suit and doing kind of doing a video about it and I just never got around to it. I started doing it and I may incorporate some of those clips from last year into this year's video but I'm still going for the same idea. I want something light. I have a regular ghillie suit that's made out of burlap which is the one I used in the videos. I killed a, a, a turkey out of it in 2019 and then last spring in 2020 I killed another one and it works real good but it's hot so you know I want to make something more of a leaf suit and maybe something shorter that'll be better in the in the warmer weather as the season progresses and it gets more green anyway so it's going to be mostly um, leaves but I'm going to use the same foundation as I did on the other one, which is fishnet that I got from Michael's, um, the arts and crafts store. It's just three quarter inch fishnet. It comes in a big, big piece. And uh, I'll show you what I do with that. And uh, like I said, for the most part, it's gonna be leaves that I got from, uh, from Amazon. They're just artificial maple leaves and they're gonna be dyed. I have synthetic dye, I have green and I have brown. Um, some of the other materials I'm going to use will be raffia, and I have, I have natural color. I have two shades of brown here, and I have green, and that, that adds depth and just, you know, a different texture, so it catches light different. And another material I'm going to be use is, uh, this Tully mesh, Tully, Tule, I'm not sure how you say it, but, um, and you can make little florets out of it. And I also have some synthetic, what is called synthetic uh, ghillie material, which I'll incorporate some of that. But most of it, I think I'm going to put on with cable ties. I have some green cable ties and some black. And that's, that's pretty much it, what I'm going to use. Uh, like I said, I'm not sure of the length yet. I'm not sure if I'm going full length, you know, waist length, or just like a cape to break up the outline up here. I think I'm going to make something to hang over my binoculars and gilly that up to add some texture and some depth here. So that'll kind of be right here if I go with a real short uh, version. And that's about it. I got to go through, I got to dye some of the leaves and I've got them all separated. Leave The other leaves I have were actually some stuff I bought from Walmart. They're artificial flowers and they have all these green leaves underneath them that I saw them, they were on sale really cheap, and I bought a bunch of them just to try them. I have some that I've already processed, and I have some more that I'm going to show you how I did it. So I'm having to redo this little segment here, because after looking back at everything I filmed, for whatever reason, one clip had no sound. I have no idea. I've probably, since this started, I've done 40 little clips of different parts of this whole build. And for some reason, this part had no sound. But these are gonna, this is the main ingredients to the soup. Um, it's gonna be leaves from, I got them on Amazon. They're just clusters, they're 400 leaves come in a pack. They're stacked super tight and they're super thin. You can see there, that's probably 100 right there. The suit is gonna be built out of basically these leaves off of these flower clusters and these leaves from Amazon. So what I do with both of them, because they're both kind of noisy, you can hear that. And this is noisy compared to, this is a flower, this is a leaf that's already been prepared. There's hardly any sound to it. You can hear it. So what I do with those leaves and these leaves is I, put them in a, in a mesh bag like this. I'll just stuff them all in there, a whole bunch of them, as many as I can get in there. I'll put them in the washing machine and in unscented detergent and unscented fabric softener. And the fabric softener really, really makes a difference with these leaves. You can see here, like, like it's not the same exact leaf, but you can see it's very similar. This is one that's that's been treated. There's hardly any sound to it. And this is one that hasn't been treated. So those are the two main ingredients and 
what you have to do to treat them. Do you have to do it? Maybe not. I don't know. I'm just trying to make the suit as quiet as I can. Yeah, and the cluster itself, or the leaves, will look like that. And I'll show you later how to do that. All right, I'm just going to show you now how I got them from, you know, flowery this to just a pile of, you know, usable leaves. And I just have a pair of cutters, nippers, cutters, whatever you want to call them. And you just slide the leaves off. Oh, and then just, you know, nip another one off. And again, this one has two more on there. Here's another example of the same one. So, and they're usable. I got them on sale um, from Walmart. I think, I think for this bundle, I paid like maybe $3. And there's a lot of usable leaves in that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's for me, it's worth $3. Um, I could have gone with just those leaves, which you get a bundle of those. You get a, a bag of those leaves for like $8, and there's 400 leaves in there. And, you know, you still have to dye them. These here, just, just to add a different texture and, and you know, a different, a different look, it, it was worth it for me to spend, I think I have 3, 6, 9, 12, maybe 15 bucks in all these leaves. So I guess if you get them on sale, you know, it, it's, it's definitely worth it. Okay, so I'll show you what I got going on with, with, the, uh, with the netting. I, like I said it before, I, I worked this already. I kind of, these threads are tied on the outline of where I plan on cutting. This is the top, this is a fold on the top of the netting. So there's no seam here, this is just folded over. This is where it's doubled over. So I'm gonna use that as the top of the, of the suit. I cut a neck hole in here, that's what these two were for, to mark where exactly where I wanted to, uh, to cut, and I cut a neck hole in there. My head will come through there, and these here are tied in the outline of where I want it to be. I didn't want this one to be as big. The other one I made oversized, because the plan was to use it for deer hunting and turkey hunting and everything else. But this one here, I want it to be a little, a little tighter on me because I don't plan on using it during the fall, maybe early fall, but I don't plan on using it when it's cold, put it that way. So what I did was I took a shirt that I know was a little big on me and uh, I just laid it out. And I came up with the outline that I wanted to use. Obviously this shirt has articulated shoulders and the suit doesn't, but it's straight on top. But as you can see, this is the same size as these sleeves. That's where these knots are. These knots are right where this sleeve goes. So that's where I, that's how I kind of sized it as far as the size of it and, and how wide I needed it to be and where my body line was and all that right on each side. So I just use these to mark where we need it to be. And then that's going to end up getting cut out and that's going to be the shape of the suit. So anyway, that's, that's how I, I sized how I wanted it. All this beyond these these ribbons here is going to be extra so I'll use these pieces for like my head cover and uh, the piece that goes over top of the boonie cap. I'm just going to cut, I'm going to cut outside a little bit just to make sure I have extra in case I ever need to retie anything. I'm going to take my time and go slow, make sure I don't cut too far, cut anything I don't really want to cut. I'm going to cut to there for now. You'll see this is what it's going to look like. Now that's the basic shape of the ghillie. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side now. The sleeves are a little short. I like to leave them about here so they're not hanging down on my hand and getting in the way of the bowstring or anything. But Because usually if they're here you know the other the stuff will hang down a little bit so I'll give you a little extra length and this extra stuff this is what's going to go on the uh, on the boonie hat to make the ghillie hat so this is what it looks like right now I just slipped it on and uh, you can see it a little better here how long the sleeves are
this is the result of yesterday's dying of the leaves. And uh, they go left to right is the undyed. And then the leaves that I left for about 20 minutes. And then the next ones are the ones I left for about 40 minutes. And the next ones are the ones I left for over an hour. So all said and done with the leaves, this is what I ended up with. Um, those are the Walmart, you know, leaves off the off those flower bundles. Those are the darkest green that I could get. I left those in for over an hour and I actually tried another dye that wasn't synthetic, a dark green and a, another liquid writ dye. And it, it didn't make, I put them in for another hour and it didn't make them any greener at all. So I kind of ended up with three different colors. That's the darkest green. This is like a medium green. And I ended up with this olivey green color and that was done with the brown. That was with a dark brown writ dye. And I left them in for, I don't know, way over an hour. And <laughs> that's all I got, so. Um, but it's a cool color. It's kind of olive, kind of really light brown. But it'll, it'll go good with the green theme of the, of the suit. I'm gonna be building a hat as well. And I have some extra netting that'll go on the hat, and I'll you know, I'll go through that process you know step by step. Um, that's pretty cool, and I've I've figured out a way to incorporate um, one of my action cameras right into the hat, so I don't need an extra band or have to wear an extra any kind of extra headgear. I can just incorporate it right into the hat with a strap with a strap that's attached, to, you know, sewn right in. This is what I'll use. I have a an old half deflated volleyball stuffed in there. It'll simulate my head and make sure I have enough room. You always want to leave enough room because if, if this hat is kind of flat and then you tie this netting on um, while it's flat like that and all of a sudden you put your head in it and you realize you haven't left enough room for the top to expand up. So it's best to have something in there when you do that. Because I, I, I have a long draw length for, for a fairly short guy. I mean, I'm only five, seven and a half and I draw almost 29 inches. So I, I need to, I can't shoot with any kind of brim in front of my face. Even a baseball cap, I have to turn completely around. Even this boonie cap, when I, when I draw it back, I can feel it hitting here. And I, I don't want, I don't like that distraction at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a couple holes in this, in this brim and use this piece of paracord to tie it back. So when I draw the string back, Hopefully the string will come back right in this area here and then I'll adjust it as need be. So I'm just gonna pop a couple holes right here and then tie it back with a, with a piece of paracord. So for now, I'm just gonna temporarily tie it because I'll probably use this same piece of paracord to tie the netting onto it when it, when it comes time to do that. I'm gonna shoot it a couple times and then see how it ends up. But you'll, you'll see here, this is the back of the hat. This would be the front. So I'm thinking the bowstring will come right back into this groove right here. Okay, so I shot it a couple times and it was it was perfect. I didn't I have no interference. It didn't touch, didn't do anything. So um, that string came right back into here where, you know, where I was hoping it would be. So now the next thing I'm going to do to prepare the hat is I came up with this idea last year and I used it on my other on my other boonie cap that uh, from my original ghillie suit that I, I've been hunting with. I like to wear a, a camera on my head to get another perspective of the shot, you know, behind the bow. And I use it deer hunting, and I've been trying to incorporate it into turkey hunting. In the blind, it's not bad because I can just put it on my head. But with the ghillie suit, it's different because there's stuff all over, and it's hard to put this on over top of the hat or under the hat. Or So last year, I came up with this idea that uh, this is detachable. So I can take this piece off. So this piece is, is movable. So what I came up with is I can attach this piece onto the hat if I just put a little piece of strap on here and sew it right to the hat itself, incorporate it into the hat, and then I can just pop this onto that. You know, I cut the netting around this so I could get to it and put the camera on and screw it on and all that stuff. And I made a flap, a ghillie flap, that came down over top of the camera and 
covered it up and still incorporated right into the hat and everything. So the first thing I need to do is cut a piece of this and get it in the right spot and, and then hand sew it on. I'll just, just needle and artificial sinew I have here. I'm just gonna hand sew it. So it's not gonna be pretty or anything, but it'll, it'll work. And it's the way that the, the, my action camera would sit like right, you know, right, it screws right onto there and it sits right here. So it's right on the side of my head and uh, it gives you that, you know, right, right behind the bow point of view of a shot. It's a really cool angle and I'm glad I, I kind of figured this out to incorporate it. So now, now what I'll do is, uh, is get the netting ready to go over top. Something like this. Of course, it's not going to be that much of it. but So I'm going to put the hat back on top of the volleyball now so it's stretched out. And then I'll get an idea of how to attach the netting. And I'll start tying it on. And then I'll trim uh, accordingly. So this is going to be the front of the hat facing me. And I'll just kind of get this centered up on there. Make sure I have enough everywhere. And then I'm just going to start taking little pieces of paracord and tie in here, making sure that I have plenty of slack here. Because as you attach things, you know, it's gonna get a little tighter. And so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut some pieces and then I'm gonna tie them on. All right, so I'm gonna get started. Just really make sure it's centered up. Make sure it has plenty of slack. And then just kind of pick a, pick a spot to tie. Right there, looks good. There's no real science to it. You're just tying it on there. Nice and loose. The way it should be. I'll do the back now. Go here. Now here's where my camera attachment is, so I'm gonna have to cut that out and I might have to tie some additional things on there or maybe shoe goo it. I'll see. I'm back at it again. I just got a shower and had some dinner. And uh, I just wanted to show you how this camera mount works with my action camera. It's going to sit like that. And this flap will come over the top. And there'll be leaves and stuff here. And that'll all be hidden. And it'll be, you know, it'll be gillied up down below it right through here. And I just got to secure this underneath here. Let me get the camera out of the way. So now that's secured under there. I'm not sure how long I'm going to leave this, but that's not really that bad. I think it's looking pretty good. In the back, it's a little longer. And of course, you know, there'll be some stuff hanging off it. So I didn't want to leave it too long in the back. My other hat was, was quite a bit longer, but I just want to make sure it's not too long. So when there's anything, you know, whatever this hangs over the top of in the back, I didn't want it to, if there's leaves sticking up off the suit and leaves hanging down off of this, you know, I want it to be able to turn without anything hanging up. So even if there's a little separation, it's not going to be bad. And I can always hang leaves down anyway, so, which is probably what I'm going to do. But anyway, like crafting these suits is, is really a lot of fun. I mean, I enjoyed making the first one. I enjoy watching the, you know, there's, there's a lot of other videos on YouTube. This kind of how I learned a lot of what I know about, about craft and ghillie suits is, you know, stuff I learned there. You know, this is just kind of the way I'm, I'm adapting this to more of a bow hunting suit. Like I said, I want it to be lightweight for warmer weather. I want it to be versatile too, you know, so I can use it, you know, during the early bow season if I want to. And I mean, when it's all said and done, you're going to see I have kind of a little bit of a system for my ghillie stuff. But this is this is basically ready to start crafting on it with leaves, and you'll see it'll it'll come to life. I mean, it it it's pretty cool. I just want to show you quick, kind of how this this works. Like this one here. This is one of the the leaves from the Walmart flowers. So it's got a hole. I don't know if you can see that hole right in the middle there. You can see it from this side better probably. 
right in the middle and the zip tie will go right through there you know and then, and then you just attach it i mean wherever you want to put it say that's in front of the camera i'm not going to want anything big and bulky of course because that's where the camera is just to give you an idea how this works and you know you know you use your zip tie and there you go i mean there, there's the start of it i'll just show you a couple more here so this this would be the front facing facing right towards the camera is the front like i said this is where the bowstring will come through right here and so i'm just going to see what this looks like up on top see what kind of depth i'm going to be able to get out of it but I'm, I'm very curious myself actually to see how these work out because i've never used leaves like this before but I think it I think it's gonna be really good actually. Just because of the stems they're on and everything already, and then when you start putting them together. So they're gonna flop around a little bit, but you remember you're gonna have other ones there to, to keep it up. So as you can see here, I've I've done a little crafting on my uh on the hat. You can see how I put this this tully on there and it, it stood these up. It helps so that's where I think these are going to come in really well besides the blurring effect they have I think they're going to help stand you know these leaves up so they have the full 3d effect so I'm just going to stick this one on here this is the flat for the camera so I'm going to do the same thing stick the zip tie through the hole but there it is I mean that's what it'll look like here's the camera so that's that's how the camera is going to going to look so here you can see what I got going so far with the hat. I've been crafting on it a little bit, but I didn't want to get too far because I got to check and see if the camera is in the right spot. I'll have to test it again once I get everything on it because you got to keep the leaves out of the way of the camera or else it kind of defeats the purpose of having the camera up there. So. so what I'll do is I'll put a couple more leave like right in here to hang down over the camera and just camouflage it a little bit better i gotta just make sure that I, I can even tack some of them down or tack tack them together just to make sure they don't move and get in the way you know when the when the time comes to to capture something you certainly don't want to wreck it by uh having stuff in your way but anyway that's where it is right now i just wanted to show you the camera and how it sits a good close-up of it and this is a Sony action camera. It's, the model is an AS50. And I can run them on one remote. I have two of them that I, want, that I run on one remote. Uh, you know, just press the button and they both come on. And they're not, they're not a real expensive camera. I think they're, you can get them now by itself without the remote for about 150 bucks. So the idea hit me the other day that I want to make a ghillie cover for my binoculars. I mean, they're black and they've never been an issue before wearing them. But um, if I decide to go with like a real short ghillie cape type um, suit, which is more chest level uh, as far as length, if I have these hanging down, um, I'll be able to, you know, kind of ghillie up another portion of my body. And if I can make it, you know, I'm just going to attach it here and here with zip ties and then I'll cut it pretty much the outline of the binoculars and I'll leave it loose at the bottom so I can just get my hand underneath there and uh, work the dial for focus. But uh, and then I'll just ghillie it up with, you know, different material and clip this one off, clip this one off. I'll probably leave it a little big for now. Right here. And, uh, right here. Right here. and that's, that's what I got there. I want to be able to just get my hand underneath and work the work the dial for focus. And you know, and then now I can just put leaves on it or whatever I want to do. I'm gonna start crafting on my uh, on the suit itself. I'm still not sure about the length. This is what I have now, which is about waist length. 
but I'm seriously thinking about making it a like a cape length, just like chest length, just because it's gonna be my suit for hotter weather, you know, as the season wears on. And that's kind of a thought. So I'm gonna craft it down to about chest level. And, you know, like I said, if I decide I want it longer, then I'll just keep going down. I'm gonna start at the top. And this is really the spot where I wanna really break up the outline and kind of build it up. But also I have to consider the draw of the bow and things like that, no interference. I'm gonna go on top first. I'm gonna try to go kind of symmetrical where I put one on one side, I'm gonna put one on the other and go from there and then start filling it in, in the front more than the back. And then I'll go around back. But for now, I think I'm gonna go right to about this level here. I'm gonna put the same triple leaf on this side. About the same spot, about four inches off from the edge of the collar. This is the head hole right here. It's where my head will be. You can see it's very time consuming, but it's fun, you know, and as it fills in, I'll get pretty much stuff where I want it to be, and then I'll start using filler filler pieces i'll use you know some of this mesh in here which really gets when it gets around these things it really stands them up real good so once i get kind of the leaves where i want them and then i'll start filling in with things like this uh, you know and the raffia and, and the secondary stuff the reason why i like to use this netting is that the camouflage shows through so i don't have to make it you know i don't have to fill every piece up Basically, the, the idea I'm going for is to be able to see the camo underneath it. And this is just adding texture and depth and uh, kind of more, you know, break up my outline better than just the camouflage. So um, at first, I'm going to go kind of light and leave gaps, put it on, see what it looks like, see what I think. Because like I said, I want to try to make it as light as possible for, uh, for warmer weather hunts. And remember, I got to be conscious of this whole area in here and also the inside of this sleeve because that's where I'm going to need the clearance for my for the bowstring to come along. So, you know, I'm not going to put anything here or here. It'll, this will all go up on top, leave this kind of bare and, you know, let the camouflage do its work in there and then through here. That's the way my other suit is. I don't have anything right through here. And uh, so this 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 one. On the other side, you can see I put it more towards the front. This one here, I'm going to cheat up towards the back more so, you know, I get the string clearance I need. I'll try to get, you know, the top belt, like I said. And I'll start working in. I'll start filling in with my leaf clusters and um, I'll try to get it down to about here. You can kind of see how everything is coming together and how, how 3D and how textured it is and how good that's going to break up my outline. I mean, that, that's the most important part, that head and neck juncture. So if I can get that to stand up really well, um, the rest is gonna be easy. But that, that is the most important part, this area here around both sides of the head, because that'll blend right in with the leaves coming off the hat. So here's a little more crafting on it. I haven't gone too crazy yet. I outlined this area here, just these three leaves, to try to represent the area that I wanna leave clear right here for my bowstring for clearance. And this whole side of the sleeve is gonna be nice and clear. But you can see the depth. And hopefully, you know, this is all gonna not be in the way and I can leave it just the way it is, nice and stood up like that. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take it off the 
holder I have here. <laughs> this this uh, kind of jerry-rigged thing, but it's the way I made my other suit. It keeps it open so you can really see what you're doing. But I'm going to unhook it and take it down, and uh, I'm going to try it on just to make sure everything works out. So this is what I have as of right now. And you can see it looks like it's going to be pretty good. Let's see if I can hold this. This is kind of how I'll be drawing the bow back like that. Maybe, maybe more like that. So I have the clearance here. I have to check this to make sure this isn't going to be in the way. I might have to move that back a little bit more towards the center. But it looks like that's going to be okay. I'll get some more on top over here. It looks like that's going to do it. Just wanted to show you quick exactly how I do the leaves. And you can see it's just the zip tie. It's just one zip tie and two leaves. I like to do it this way because when you put it on the suit, wherever you attach it, it stands right up. And there's always good depth and texture to it. So all I do is I take one of the leaves and I just start folding the base up. And I take my needle. It's just a big sewing needle big thick needle it cuts a good good size hole in the put it through and just take it out put the zip tie through same hole run it up to the top there Do the same thing with this leaf. Fold it three or four times. You can see how it is. I mean, it'll be pinched like that. Again, take your needle. Run it through the folds. Take your zip tie. Punch it through the same holes. And there you are. And once it's on there, you can see your texture there and your depth. I've found that if you rip it, you end up with a better, a way better edge. You don't have that sharp cut. And this just looks a little bit more natural. See, like that end there has just got a sharp cut on it, where, and you can see the difference. It's just a lot more natural. So you just kind of rip it. And then rip it. Just keep putting it on top of itself. Rip another one. And what I do is I twist it like that. And get one cable tie. Put it through like this. And keep that like that. Get another cable tie. And put it around the base of this one. So when you squeeze it, as you pull it tight, it makes everything stand up. You get this one tight down to the other one, tighten it up, cut it off. And now when you put this one on, this one will stand right up. And that piece there is a little long, so just rip it. And then I'll spread it out. I can either have it hanging down, sticking out, sticking up. And then I can spread this out almost like a flower blossom. Remember when I was talking about that Tully mesh material, I was talking about how it kind of blurs the outline. And you can see, I mean, it going along this edge, you can see when you hit that, 
everything behind it is blurry. You can tell something is there, but it's not, you know, it, it's not opaque where you can't see through it. And you can see the same thing here. And from a distance, you can see how it kind of blurs. You can see it right there, how it's blurry. And it's kind of blurry right there. So it's really kind of cool material. So I've made a little more progress on it. I worked on it some yesterday after work and uh, coming out good so far. I tried it on a few times. There's a couple things I had to change, some leaves I had to move or cut off and get rid of, but it's kind of the process, you know, as, as you build it, you might put something that's in the way you can't see real good or string clearance issues or something like that. So um, that's what I've been working on. And I've also decided to incorporate an arm guard into this suit because the other one I used to use a separate arm guard and I, I usually don't shoot with an arm guard on but I've noticed with my ghillie suit I had to and this one here is basically the same problem but it's a pain getting the arm guard on and off through the leaves and everything so I just this one here is kind of sewed in in the front and the back will kind of stay where it is and on the back side of the arm, it's just woven through the through the netting, so it should stay. I've had it on and off a couple times, and it looks like it's going to work just fine. Uh, I don't like the dark patch right there of the arm guard, so I think I'm going to incorporate some leaves in it. And it's just a cloth guard. There's nothing to it, really. There's no leather, no nothing. Nice and soft. So what I think I'm gonna do is get some glue, and I think if I can find my shoe glue, uh, shoe goo, it should work. And just put some leaves on the arm guard just to break up that darkness. Well, this is where we are right now with it. I've incorporated an arm guard into it, and uh, get rid of my shooting glove. I was just about to take a couple shots, but this is kind of what it looks like. I, now, you know, I have to finish up the hat and uh, fill some spots in, but this is pretty much the way it's going to be, and this sleeve is is pretty good. You know, I just got to decide on the length and go from there. I'm going to take a couple shots now, though. Here's pretty much the finished uh, integrated arm guard that I put into it. It's just an old arm guard I had laying around. It's just some soft, uh, like micro fleece fabric. And uh, I didn't like the darkness, so I glued some leaves to it with some uh, shoe goo. So it's flexible. And the straps are just integrated right through the, through the netting. And as I slide it on, I'll just tighten them up and uh, be good to go. It would be perfect for shooting my bow. And uh, it's just about done. I just got to finish the back. This is the front. I believe I'm going to keep it at about uh, chest length. This side's pretty much done. Like I said, I just have some opening in the back. And the back's going to be short because I'm only going to go down about, about that far in the back. If you can see the top there. And because uh, the chair is going to have some 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 leaves and gilly stuff on it. So that'll cover my back pretty much. Now this is the piece that I created before with the Tully mesh, the raffia, and a couple strands of the artificial uh, yarn that they use for ghillie suits, official stuff. But you can see I got a spot here, I'm going to put it right into there. So what I do is take, look it around the spot where I want to put it. Oh, 
hook on, get it pushed into the zip tie, get it exactly where I want it, and then just tighten it up. Cut off the rest of the zip tie. And then you can do with it what you want. I mean, you can separate it. You can kind of mash these. You could separate some of the raffia. You can crinkle it up so it looks more natural, like real dead grass, which I believe is what it is. But yeah, separate all this. These will just kind of ride up in there, and that's what you end up with. Something real natural looking. To me, that looks like it's going to do it on the back. Looks pretty good. I mean, there's some open spots there, but I'll be wearing camouflage underneath, and that's the whole idea of the suit is to keep it, you know, open and airy so I don't get too hot. And it looks like that's going to be about the length of the back. It's just going to be right about at my shoulder blades length because the back of the chair that I'm going to be sitting on is going to be gillied up too. So I don't want like zip tie sticking into my back and all that sort of thing while I'm leaning back against the chair. So I'm probably just going to leave it like this. I do have to incorporate some pull tabs on the arm guard uh, straps just to make it easier, I'm probably gonna put like an elastic loop so in there and just so I can get a finger in there and pull it so I don't have to fight for it in here, the little tiny tabs. Looks like the front is pretty much done now. I just finished up a couple spots that needed to be touched up. And uh, this is the chest area where the bowstring will come through and that's plain. That's my arm guard I integrated into the suit. And you can see, I mean, if that's looking down the suit, you can see where the open area is. But plenty of texture, and it's super lightweight. I mean, it looks like I'm going to leave it this length as well. You can see it there, the length of it. It's uh, just below my chest, which I think is going to be perfect for the hotter weather. And, you know, between the suit and everything I have around me, you know, that my camera rig is pretty much going to be gillied up. My bow is gillied up. So I'm going to have plenty of cover around me for my lower half. So I'm not really worried about that too much. So tomorrow I'm probably going to, I'll put it on after work, do some practice shooting to see if I have any adjustments I got to make. And uh, we'll go from there. The hat's done. This is done. And then my binocular cover is pretty much done. I think it's going to work. We'll see you tomorrow. I'll put the whole rig on and see how it ends up. Here's some loops I tied on the end of the, the straps of the arm guard that I integrated into the suit. Instead of trying to mess with these little short straps, I figured I'd put a loop on the end so I can quickly just get a thumb in there or just pull on this and tighten it up quick. You know, if I'm running and gunning or in the dark, I don't have to fiddle with it too much. So I decided to make a pair of gloves to go along with the suit. And all you do is you take a pair of gloves, whichever ones you want to use, these are a pair of really lightweight Kuyu gloves. And you just take some, uh, some of the netting. You cut a piece. You can see this one's done already. Cut a piece however long you want to make it. We'll go here with this one. And you just take your shoe goo. And you just dab it on in a couple spots. I just like to wet my finger and then just make sure it gets pressed in good on them. And that's it. And then I'll be able to gilly that those two little sections right up. Nothing to it. Go on like this. 
this one's almost dry already i did this one first so that's kind of what it is and then you just hang your stuff on it whatever you want to hang there a couple leaves whatever this is what i ended up with you could see how 3d they are and how leafy they are and that's totally probably about 10 minutes worth of work right there that's it here you go this is what the glove looks like when it's on i have the three fingers cut off because i shoot with a shooting glove and those are the three fingers that i grip the string with and uh, you can see how gillied up that really is this is the final shape i ended up with for the body of the suit you can see I left it hanging on the sides a little longer where the middle there is chest length and I left the sides longer just my thought is that you know as I raise my arms it'll still give me some you know some break up along my outline my edges of my outline necessary or not I, I don't know but just something I thought about right before I cut it. So I left it long on the edges, cut it shorter in the middle. And, you know, that's kind of where I ended up almost. <laughs> it looks like a bat. But uh, I like it. The only thing I have to do now is is just shoot it a little bit. Make sure everything is, is good, which it should be. I've, I've been shooting it, you know, on and off throughout the whole process. And there's the hat. You know, the little camera holder is right in there. And that'll be up like that when the camera's in there. And then there's my gloves. And this is the piece for my binoculars that I'll put on my binoculars when, uh, when the time comes. I'm going to put the hat on and I've got the camera in the holder and I'm going to turn it on and I can see here I'm not sure you can see that but you can this is the remote that turns them on I only have one on right now but anyway I'm going to get the point of view from behind the bow and from behind me All in all, it's uh, it's pretty much on the money. I have a, I have this leaf here that kind of not crazy about because as I draw back, it kind of hits against my face right there. So I may do something about that. I have to trim these down a little bit. Maybe even move this one and and uh, and this one to the bottom, just so I have more clearance up here. But um. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I like the shape of it. It's light. The only thing I don't have on is my, you know, my binoculars with the cover over it. But um, that's pretty much it. You know, there's my bow will be gillied up and everything, but that's that's subject for another video. So, but uh, yeah, that's about it.